Time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. Continuing our 49ers roster countdown with a fun one. Number 67, running back Jordan Mason out of Georgia Tech, the Yellow Jackets, baby. Um, this kid, this is like Kyle Shanahan going shopping um, and his gifts from the past. And what I mean by that is whenever I see Jordan Mason, when I read about Jordan Mason, when I watch Jordan Mason, whenever I do anything with Jordan Mason, whole time I'm just like, this is Alfred Morris. This is Alfred Morris in a past life. He's a clone, man. Um, and I mean that in the best positive possible sense, uh, not trying to slight at all. Um, so who is Jordan Mason? He's wearing number 41. First off, when I see a running back with a four in front of it, I go straight William Floyd, bar none. I'm just like, yeah, let's get it, Tom Rathman. And he fits this class. Came in just barely over 5'10". You know, some people, some sites are going to have him 5'11 if they round up. 5'10", 223. This dude is a brick house. Uh, <laughs> he's a big dude, man. 23 years old, entering his rookie season, undrafted free agent. A lot of people had sixth, seventh round grades on him. Um I didn't get my draft work done on him just because I it wasn't a burner, whatever else. But this shift, Trey Sermon, TDP, Jordan Mason, this is the new Kyle Shanahan running back that he wants to pair with Trey Lance. He wants first downs. He wants to convert short yard situations. He wants to convert red zones. Jordan Mason fits that thread with those other three guys. And I'll, I'll be really honest with you. If Jordan Mason would have been on this roster two years ago, he'd be everybody's favorite, you know, un undrafted free agent crush. We get one every year. Not sure who it's going to be this year. Jordan Mason's pretty high on that list. And before I continue, I'm telling you this right now. I cannot see or envision a world in which Jordan Mason is not called up to the active roster at some point this year. He's going to surpass some guys. I'm telling you that right now. There's just too much. There's too much that he does well that running backs on the current roster do not do well. All right, but before we get to that, let's back up. Let's go back to high school. Jordan Mason's journey, um, he played at Gallatin High School in Tennessee, home of the Green Wave. Um, I like their high school uniforms. It's the Green Bay look, uh, so it's that G, right? Um their stadium's awesome. I've been to Gallatin, Tennessee uh, before in the past. Did a job of my dad out there, whatever, as a kid uh, building apartments. But this is northeast of Nashville, tucked away in the mountains, uh, probably about, I don't know, 30 miles northeast of um, Nashville. And he, he's a smart guy. Business administration. Guy's got his head on his shoulders. There's no doubt about that. Now, if you look at kind of what he did whenever he was at Georgia Tech, he stepped in right away and was the guy. So you're talking a four-year starter, and his freshman, sophomore year was the bell cow. Then had to kind of split carries. Um, you know, they brought somebody else in. I don't want to spend time talking about him. And then it was kind of a, you know, tandem backfield. So his numbers and kind of notoriety dipped. But, man, when you watch him, okay, a couple things. This dude began playing football at the age of five, by the way. Um padded football at the age of five they do it different in the south toughness understanding you know special teams this dude is a bulldog that wants to fight for everything that is difficult consistency that's one of the things like he's the quintessential 20 carry 100 yard back he's not splashy he's not you know your 40 yard burst down the sideline that's not what he is he's i'm running through what you give me I'm going to slip arm tackles. I'm going to do whatever it is to get first downs. He's a chain mover, okay? Now, if you look at what he's been able to accomplish in the ACC, I mean, good gosh, top 10 in the ACC in touchdowns ever. <laughs> attempts and yards in 2019, he was top 10. 15th in school history and attempts. Had 449 rush attempts. So he had a lot more work than TDP did um, throughout his college career. And probably my favorite stat from him, he broke a tackle on 44% of his attempts in 2020, 2021. Best in the country. Tied for best in the country. Uh, he's breaking a tackle every other carry. Um, and so that, that's kind of what he is. Now let's look at his athletic profile, ran a four, five, eight, not a speedster, but again, 220 plus pounds, 
You're not really expecting that. Three cone, 7.19, not shifty. Uh, vertical, 33, that's pretty solid. And again, probably his his claim to fame, and this is this kind of shows you who he is. 21 bench press reps at 225 pounds. He didn't get invited to the combine. If he would have, he would have been the number one running back that was draft eligible. He's strong, man. It's upper body. It's toughness. It's Emmett Smith's shoulders. It's, you know, bowling ball thighs, Maurice Jones, Drew style. He's none of those guys. He's an undrafted free agent. But I'm telling you right now, man, Maurice, I I'm trying to paint a picture. When I watch him play, decisive, you know, B gap slasher. That's just, he runs through arm tackles. It's Alfred Morris clone, man. I'm telling you. Not sexy, but beefy. <laughs> uh, came on as an undrafted free agent. Again, you look at his career stats with what he could do. 43 games, 20 starts, 449 attempts, 23,000 yards, 17 touchdowns. Um, you know, my personal write-up on him, at his best, slipping through arm tackles. He can run over people, but that's not his M.O., he finds creases and attacks the crease. And so, you know, it's kind of like a defensive end attacking an offensive lineman in pass rush. You attack quarter man, you win. You attack half man, you got a chance to win. You attack full man, you're not going to win. Nobody ever gets a clean hit on the dude. Um, he's north-south runner, not shifty. But, man, he attacks that inside of the elbow on the arm tackle and just carries folks. Um, great in special teams holds, holds his own in the passing game. I didn't see any negatives there, but with his body type, you're not going to be a third down back. That's not what it is. He's going to be a short yardage kind of chain mover. That's what, that's what short. I mean, red zone. That's what this dude brings. And, you know, I'll be honest with you. I love TDP and I think he's going to pan out, but it's got a very similar feel to last year, right? Trey Sermon was the early back. Didn't pan out. The late round guy, Elijah Mitchell, took over. Man, if TDP struggles, Ty Davis Price, which I don't think he will, but if he does, there is space on this roster for Jordan Mason. I could 100% see him come in. So let's talk best case scenario. He showcases his power and Kyle, and they keep him around on the practice squad. That's where he needs to belong. Okay. Um, that's where he needs to belong. But, again, I'm going to say this again. I'd bet the farm that this dude gets called up and gets active carries in the game this season. I, I'm just telling you, with the way the 49ers go through running backs and injuries and whatever else, if this kid can prove he can, one, not fumble, two, be decent and pass pro, man, you're talking weeks five, six, seven on, injury happens to anybody. This dude should be one of the guys called up. It just makes way too much sense, especially with what he does on special teams. This dude can be on all of them. All of them. Now, most likely scenario, um, he's got four out of five people ahead of him, and he's going to have to beat somebody out or an injury. You know, Elijah Mitchell, Ty Davis Price, Jeff Wilson Jr., that's one of the guys that I can see these two kind of going at each other. Sermon, I think, is safe. Um, and then you got Hasty there as well. So he's got to be able to pass some of those guys. I don't think he's in contention with Hasty because Hasty does that third down roll. It's, it's Wilson, Jeff Wilson Jr., Trey Sermon, Jordan Mason. I think they keep two out of three of those guys. Can can Mason surpass one of those two and prove he belongs? That's what it looks like. Um, but uh, most likely with Jordan Mason, he's going to be on the practice squad. But this should be everybody's team favorite. When that preseason comes out, baby, and y'all see him run through some arm tackles, Everybody's going to be like, oh, Elijah Mitchell, 2.0, all that stuff. I'm telling you right now, people are going to love this kid whenever they get to see him under the bright lights during the preseason and training camp. So that's Jordan Base. I want to say thank you to Anthony and Josh. They continue to crush it. Love this series, and we're just going to keep grinding.